But y'all, it's uh, Stephen Van Camp and Lewis on June 18th. But I'm going to uh, record this and, and post this care collab along with everybody else, of course, which is how these care collabs work on June 23rd. So what I'm going to talk about today is Ancelia Africana and the other folks that are going to be talking about Ancelia Africana include Fernanda Nascimento, Orchids and Succulents, Dee Dee's Blooms, Patricia's Orchids, Toki World, uh, hosted by Mark, The Orchid Saga, and of course Nina from Ninja Orchids who, who generally puts together these care collabs. So while my Ancelia Africana is not in bloom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about its, its background and some of the um, you know, where it's from, how to grow it, kind of stuff like that. The, the sort of typical care collab type topics that are typically brought up. And then I'll show you my plants. Uh, I've got two left, two left. Uh, one is, you know, I sold one earlier the, this year and that was the star-shaped one for those of you who, who follow my channel regularly. And then I have another one with sort of larger flowers that I'm keeping. And then another one that the plant itself is, appears to be staying fairly short statured and I'm kind of hoping that it stays that way but I haven't seen the blooms yet anyway let's talk a little bit about this where this one is from and its range really it's got a huge huge range as you can assume from the name Ancelia Africana it is from Africa and its range actually includes most of tropical Africa all the way down through the continent into South Africa and this is a species that is, is actually monotypic. So there's only one species in the genus Ancelia. If you look at some of the old literature, sometimes you'll see uh, things like Ancelia nilotica or Ancelia gigantea. And, and none of those species actually exist. They're all Ancelia africana. But, you know, as you can imagine for a species whose range is just across such a huge area, it has a lot of variability in, in the flowers. In fact, uh, as you can see here, these these flowers, I'm scrolling through Orchid Roots right now, which is a great website. I really like that website for a lot of reasons. Uh, and it's sort of a, a crowdsourced website where uh, everybody kind of uh, put posts photos, not onto the website, but onto the Facebook page. And then the, the, the folks that uh, caretake that website grab some of the best photos and, and, and put them on the site for, for each species and hybrid. As you can see, I'm scrolling through here and you can see what these flowers look like. So some of the flowers can be you know, almost white or sort of a very light cream color with sort of a few speckles to, to the more traditional or typical flower color, which is mostly a yellow with some, some type of bronze or, or that, type of a, 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 that type of coloration. A lot of the time, actually, the new breeding is really showing a lot of red. And I don't, I don't know enough of that, about that species to know if the red comes from line breeding or if they found dark red flowers out in nature. I suspect it's line breeding, but I, I would really appreciate any comments uh, from some of my South African viewers or some of the, the fellow Ancelia fans like myself who, who know a little bit more about this new red one that's coming online. I know that uh, there is a, a, a group or a company called Afri Orchids in, uh, in of course, Africa, and they sell uh, a lot of African orchids in Ancelia Africana specifically, and the red ones are coming from them, and then they're being shipped to the United States at shows, and uh, James Rose, actually, there at Cal Orchid sells a lot of those. So uh, anyway, so you can see that there's a lot of variability in this particular species. Now, Ancelia is closely related to Catacetums, to Cirripodiums, to cymbidiums and basically that whole cymbidium group there are there are registered hybrids with cymbidiums catacetums um uh, mormides cloacea a lot of that whole group uh, i want to say there's a, a a cross with certipodiums as well although i'm not entirely sure again if you know the answer to that uh leave a comment I, i'd be really curious to hear what you have to say but you know so this is a species that isn't is, is sort of gaining some popularity and as people realize what, what a great plant it is. Uh, but it doesn't get big. You know, these, these flowers, or excuse me, these plants can be up to three feet tall and they can have, the, they can have spikes which are easily more than three feet long and these sort of big showy 
uh, sprays of flour so that they can take up a lot of space but um, not necessarily uh, vertically horizontally sure but vertically there it's a very compact plant the the growth seem to stay right next to each other which is really handy for um, for those of us that have bench space uh, limitations but maybe not necessarily height limitations so for size comparison I have this Ancelia Africana next to my oldest son Hunter who has wanted to be in my videos for a while so I figured he could hold up my largest Ancelia, which is looking a little sad right now because it's, you know, it's it's that time of year where the the new growths are, are still fairly small, so it hasn't fully leafed out yet, and, you know, living on a patio isn't very conducive to uh, growing this one very well, but you can see the, the new growths here, and if I were to zoom in here, you would see these roots popping out. Uh, which are actually from last year. So th this this group is a very vigorous root growing species. And then you can see, uh, like so many of the those epiphytes in the Cymbidium tribe, they have these aerial roots that pop up. And on the large, large plants, these turns into a sort of a big bird's nest of, of aerial roots that are used to capture falling leaves and debris. And then that debris, of course, rots and turns into fertilizer. So Hunter is again holding another plant, and this is sort of a happier looking plant. This is this is what you want your plants to look like. Lots of leaves. But what's interesting about this one is that it's, it's much uh, shorter. It's not nearly as tall as the other one. And I don't know if it's going to stay like that. My friend Gareth sent me a single bulb right here a couple years ago, which he actually even cut in half so he could get into the shipping box. And that was all I had to grow with, and this plant sprung from that. So it's a very hardy species, grows really easily for me here in Texas. And you can see these, these bulbs are, are significantly shorter than the last one. Uh, the leaves are much thicker, so I don't know if that's a regional variation for this particular species, or excuse me, for this particular plant. I haven't seen it growing flowers yet, so I don't know what those are going to look like. So they could come out as something totally new or they could just look like your sort of standard uh, Ancelia. Uh, you know, I don't really know what they're going to look like. So, uh, you know, caring for Ancelia is fairly straightforward. It's it's not unlike Cattleya care. And the, of course, when I say Cattleya care, you know, these uh, Ancelia are epiphytes, just like Cattleya, so they grow in trees. So your bark mix, you're going to want to have sort of a big, chunky bark mix. I like to use Orchiata in a clay pot. You know, you can use whatever epiphyte mix works for you. But I, uh, you know, I, I grow this one outside here in Texas, so it really, really loves that heat. As you can imagine, being from tropical Africa where they have elevated temperatures uh, throughout the year. However, uh, what's interesting is this one can take cooler temperatures. So... So if, uh, I've had mine close to freezing several times, and it, they didn't miss a beat. Um, and I know that other folks report being able to have a very light frost in these guys, and they're, they're just fine with that. Uh, however, they, they do need a dry winter rest. The dry winter rest is probably what helps get them through those colder periods. Uh, you know, if, if the roots, of course, are wet, and then you're getting close to freezing, that, that's kind of when you start want to, that's when you start having problems with the plants. Uh, however, um, you really can't get a good blooming unless you give them a significantly dry rest. And when I say dry rest, I don't mean like, you know, catacetum dry rest where they're not getting watered for months on end. Uh, these guys will not tolerate that. But what you're going to want to have is, is sort of an extended period between watering. So maybe once a week, once every other week. You know, if your plant dries off in a day or two, then maybe you give it three or four or five days between waterings during the really cold times of the year. And that'll help initiate a good, a good flowering. They also prefer to be on the sort of upper end of the light spectrum compared to most cattleyas. So if you can grow your cattleyas uh, in very bright conditions, that's, that's the type of light that you're going to want your Ancelia to grow in. If you can't provide the very bright light, there's a good chance that it actually won't bloom. So, so be thinking about that when you're considering purchasing one, you know, not only the, the vertical size, uh, but also the, the amount of light that they need. And like I said, they do really appreciate some very hot summer temperature.
I fertilize these at the same rate that I fertilize my cattleyas. So, so to recap, the growing is similar to cattleyas, but in brighter conditions. Uh, that's really that's the that's how I would summarize it in sort of a concise way of describing the care. And again, large grade orchiata bark is how I grow it in clay pots.